It is a month of celebration in SRE. This month, we have the privilege of celebrating our spiritual father, the bond servant of Christ, John Enosike, the senior pastor and founder of the Nation of God, Spirit Revelation Ecclesia. If you have been blessed and impacted by the ministry of the man of God, here is an opportunity to minister to the man of God and celebrate his position over our lives. For seed and monetary gifts, please use this NetBank account for both local and international donations. Account number 1190608626. Account name Mr. I.J. Anosike. Bank, NetBank. Branch code 1021900. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 41, He that receives a prophet in the name of the prophet and giveth him water to drink shall receive the prophet's reward. Your prosperity is dependent on the prophet's blessing. My prophet, my prosperity. It's time to celebrate. It's time to break out of poverty and prosper. 30th of April, 2022 is the birthday celebration of the bond servant of Christ, John Enosike. See you there. As many as will be given for our Papa's birthday, please take note that there have been prowlers on the internet, putting up platforms in our name, decorating it so amazingly with our pictures, chatting with people, giving bank details, and asking for funds. Please understand this is a disclaimer. Spirit Revelation Ecclesia, and Pastor John and Pastor Ola Anasike, do not solicit funds online. Do not chat with you in private. We understand the ethics and the ministerial code. We do not make friendship with you or invite you to suicide specially to us through your inboxes. Everything that is done in the house of the Lord is done from this altar and every other is a counterfeit. Please desist if any have approached you on the internet, online, or through any, or any means, Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, it is not us, and they are not of us. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to flash to you the account that you used for our Papa's birthday, because such devi devious minds also follow the services. Now that they have heard this giving for our Papa's birthday, Many are now going into the inboxes of people saying this is the account to use. Give for Papa's birthday. Please be very careful and vigilant so that your seed is sown in the right place. Don't sow your seed in the wrong ground and reap no fruit of it. The account details of our Papa will be flashed on the screen. Can you take note and ensure that this is the account that you are working with and none other? You can check. Take a moment to check. If that is the account that you have with you, any other that has been given to you in the secret is not of us. And in the same spirit, these are the two accounts of Spirit Revelation Ecclesia and no other. We have the account for the building project and the rental vows and the ones that are used for the general church. Now, the media will flash those two accounts for you Take a moment one more time again to check the banking details that you have with you and ensure that they are the right ones that you are using. Spirit Revelation Ecclesia presents the Invisible Rulers Conference. Three Mystic Creatures of the Heavenly Realms. Subtopics to be covered. 1. The Rebelled Gods. 2. Invisible Nations over Visible Nations. 3. Invisible World Rulers. Yahweh has other nations that are not humans. There are other civilizations. There are other creatures. There are council of gods the council of gods 
the council of sons of God. We are not the only sons of God. You will hear why our world is controlled by higher powers. The invisible beings have invaded human creatures. Your perception of the spiritual world will increase. Mysteries will be unveiled and depths will be unleashed as the bondservant of Christ, John, will release ancient transcripts from Zion for the glorification of the saints. I am coming from a council from heaven that you don't know about. Give him the ability to come upon the earth to bring this revelation and the transition of the body of Christ to the Eden of God where they belong. Pastors, teachers, apostles, prophets, and evangelists, you are invited and all believers across the nations. God has granted the bond servant of Christ, John, access to this revelation for the preceding days of the emerging age of the sons of God. It is written, the earnest expectation of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 19. Date, Monday, 25th to 28th, April 2022. Time, 6 to 9 p.m. daily. Venue, 416 Vortrecker Road, Maitland, Cape Town, South Africa. See you there. says that the diversities of the spirit are given to every man and one of the gifts of the Holy Ghost is diverse tongues now some of you are speaking in tongues, but there are those that have the gift of diversity. <laughs> Ability to speak languages beyond here. The language that elements understand. The language that mountains understand. The language that the dead understand. The language that the sea understand. Peace, be still. You can go and repeat the same and yet the storm is still there. Every creature has a language. Kalesha! Kalevrida! That's why we look at cancer. We say, come out. And look. Mamanangia noko zukuradi nasa. Kerevre kanto baradas. Krambre katayada. Inahu sadia. Inahu sadia. Inahu sadia. Karate mania soda. Karaba. So through faith, I have access to all the commanding, ruling abilities and languages of every creature. Listen. No, we end up trying to raise you up to a point where you become a spirit because the Bible said that he that is born of the spirit is a spirit but we just speak it but we're not in it in, in reality now this demon was speaking in a language that many of you did not hear and I heard what the demon was saying and I went into that same language I conversed with that spirit and I kicked it out in the language that he was, the demon was speaking. I'm very grateful today that I received the gift, the voice of the spirit. Before, I knew I used to speak other people's tongues. I just listened to people, then I started just speaking. My stomach was just burning. My body was on fire. I started sweating. My, oil, my eyes started turning. Everything about me was just hot. 
my mouth started vibrating. Thank you, Papa, for coming to Cape Town. <laughs> and um, when Papa prayed for me, I just felt an overwhelming presence of God. And I just want to thank Papa for praying me, and I want to thank God for receiving my gift of praying in tongues. My grootste wens was nog om in tale te kan praat. En ek het gekom dat papa vir my bid, dat ek in tale kan, kan bid. <laughs> en ek, dit, ek, kan nie, ek kan nie beskryf wat sy gevoel dit was nie. En ek wil net al die eer, al die lof, al die roem vir God gee, dat hy die gebed verhoor het van my. My grootse hartse begeerte was om in tale te kan bid, God lewe. As ons gewonder het of God lewe, God lewe. The age of the sons of God has come. Satan and his demons will not rule this civilization. We are a ministry that believes literally what the Bible says. We don't want to add, we don't want to subtract. We believe what the Word of God says. The Bible says, being born again, not of corruptible seed. Your root, the source of your existence in Christ is incorruptible. And nothing can stop you. Nothing can break you. Nothing can defile you. Nothing can corrupt you. Welcome to the camp of life. Welcome to the tribe of incorruptibles in Christ. I'm a messenger of God sent into this generation to raise incorruptible sons of God that would defy physical death. They shall live and remain until the appearance of Jesus or they will transform to exit the earth by revelation, not through death. Before Jesus will come, that is going to be the manifestation, the revealing of incorruptible, immortal sons of God. So, listen, I'm not talking about sons of men. Lahida prahoste finadost and the vialost. I want you to understand what the key word is in that scripture. The revealing of the sons of God. Sons of God. Sons of God. How to capture the realities of the sons of God is to look to Jesus, how he lived on earth. Jesus was the first sample of the Son of God, of a Son of God. Jesus lived a life of absolute power. He walked on the water. He rebuked the storms. He multiplied bread and fishes. He lived in the mountains. He lived a holy, a pure, and a consecrated life. His consciousness was captured in Zion. He was a man in tune with his father. Jesus said, what I see my father do is what I do. What I hear him say is what I say. Hallelujah, sons of God. So when we speak of sonship, we're referring to a, a, a breed of believers that will be captured in the depths of the Lord, in, in the consciousness of Yahweh, completely body, soul, and spirit. I want to specially invite every one of you to please join me on our YouTube account, our Facebook account, Instagram account, and every possible social media. We're there. Pastor John Anosike. Hallelujah. Please join me. You will be blessed this year. So much revelations, so much visions, so much word, so much healing and miracles and manifestations and ascension into the realms of God shall be your witness this year. Guess, guess what? God is about to do amazing things this year. So join me on all of our social platforms. 
and you will be blessed especially youtube facebook instagram and tiktok and every other ones and god bless you join us for worship every sunday first service 7 a.m second service 10 a.m school of revelation our bible study at 6 p.m a time of in-depth study of god's word it's time to come to the knowledge of truth and grow in revelation with the bond servant of christ john and osike healing nights with jesus every tuesday at 6 p.m to 8 30 p.m an atmosphere of miracles where the man of god takes time to minister to different cases christ remains the solution to every problem of man venue 416 Boer trekker road maitland cape town south africa telephone plus 2721 510-4029 WhatsApp plus Expecting uh, a lot to happen when the man of God comes. I'm expecting for all the revelation, um, for the word of God, for this moment, for our service, for our church. We we are so happy to have a spiritual father like uh, Pastor John Anosike. When he comes back, I'm expecting a, a, a lot from him. Because God is with Papa, always he is with Papa. And we, we, we've got our testimony about him. Well, when he come back, we know that will be a fire. Uh, my expectation for when Papa comes out is a lot of things that, um, for, for instance, for, I'm only here for a short time, but the way my life has shifted in this short time, I give God the glory. And, uh, and as Papa always say, he doesn't take the glory, God takes the glory. So my expectance for, for when Papa comes out is my um, commitment to Christ, my relationship with God, to have that intimacy with God. And I know that this covering is going to take me from glory to glory. I want to say to the Lord, thank you for bringing Mama and Papa to South Africa, to Cape Town, only for Him to come and touch us. understanding and come into spiritual alignment with your word oh precious holy spirit you're the greatest teacher you're the teacher i ask you that you teach tonight speak through my vocal cavity think through my thoughts that every word that will proceed from my mouth tonight will be that which you have approved for your sons to hear and develop spiritually for we thank you, you have had us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. Thank you. You're be seated. Now, you know, in, it's important that we uh, understand the subject tonight. Thank you. It is a very vital, very good subject that I believe will be a blessing to every one of you tonight. Amen. So, um, Today's subject is titled The Mystery of Trees. The Mystery of Trees. Um, unfortunately, we live in a world of carelessness and a world that has been deceived 
in the sense that we have allowed our world to do away with spiritual realities. Yet everything that we are and everything that we will become is completely influenced by spiritual forces and spiritual laws. You know, um, it is unfortunate that we do away with spiritual things and, and give most of our attention to natural, physical illusion. In fact, one of the profound scriptures that I love to use as often as possible is found where Paul instructed us to look more at the things which are unseen. In fact, he said to us, do not look at the things which do appear. <laughs> you see that? In other words, he says, hey, sons of God, pay more attention to things which are not seen. Pay more attention to things which are not visible. You see, for the things which are seen are temporal. The things which are seen are but prisoners subject to time. I mean, things which are seen are, are subject to time. They are subject to fade away. So if we are to build our lives on the things which are seen, then that means we are of all men most miserable. So we live in a world that things have lost their enchantments, things have lost their significance and their glory. And things are just things. We don't look deeper into the spiritual lineage, the spiritual significance, the spiritual root of things. And because of that, we have handed over our body, our, our mental state, our spiritual life to one kind of individual who has built for us faculties of studies in our schools and universities. Our minds have been conditioned by men who are completely ignorant of spiritual realities. And that's why a pandemic came up and billions are dying. We're just waiting for what next law what was the way out? <laughs> and we're all like sheep going to be slaughtered. Oh, Jesus wept. I refuse that devil. Are you, hear, are you getting my line of thinking tonight? Thank God for the word of God. Amen. You see, in our world, things have lost their enchantment and their glory. And of course, uh, uh, things are just things. You know, to some folks, a star is just a nuclear fusion. A star is like, oh, I don't know, it looks like twinkling, twinkling little star. How I wonder what you are. Really? The stars up there in the firmament are not just stars. They are powers. They are abilities that can alter your day. They're not just things you... I, I, would you believe it that astrologians looked up to the star and they were able to predict the birth of Jesus. They were able to follow the stars to the very place where Jesus was born. Oh, here we go. But somewhere they haven't taught you that stars can be read.
Praise the Lord. Now, now, somewhere we've been told that a star is just a nuclear fusion. A snake is just a reptile. Oh, how many reptiles do we have in the world? Oh, we have different kinds of reptiles. Snakes, these, and that. And that's where it, it, it ends. But they haven't told you that if you are on the BP drugs, you're actually eating from the venom of snakes. Do you know that, that actually some of the medications you take, such as BP medications, are from venoms of snakes? Of course, scientists have succeeded to tap into certain cures from reptiles. But you don't know. Oh, I'm on a BP medication. <laughs> and that's why they, they don't want you to kill those snakes. They don't want to tell you. Because you are common masses. There are hidden abilities within God's creatures. And all, all of these abilities are for us to enjoy, develop, and take advantage of. Trust me. Hear me out. A time is coming, glory to God, that through the, seven, uh, through the university of the seven spirit of God, we are going to raise the best doctors in the world, the best scientists in the world. Listen, I have been called by God to raise a generation of the body of Christ that will not see physical death, period. And it's, it's not just only by faith that this will be actual. No, no, no. There's a lot of responsibilities on my shoulders. I have understanding of the mysterious mystical revelations and knowledge within the creation of God. Everything God created has a potency. Am I communicating tonight? Hallelujah, sons of God. Everything God created has a potency and those things are for our advantage. You know, a snake, we have perceived a snake as just a reptile. Sometimes we say a, a big bee is just you know, an arrangement of cells. So we can't see the inside. So we've been deprived from seeing the interiority of things. Now, all is not lost, amen, sons of God. I believe that God is about to recall us back to order. Amen. I see revelation rising in these last days. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. Amen. Now, let's get to the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 to 8. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul and the Lord God planted a garden a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man which he had formed. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, uh, probably let's go on. Let's go on verse number nine. Uh, we're going to read. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, I love this.
verse 9, and it says, And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree, somebody say every tree, that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, take note of verse number 10, very, very powerful. Please, before we read verse number 10, please, before we read verse number 10, take note of one thing very significant about the trees in the garden. Now, if you had read earlier, when God had cast man out of the, out of the Eden of God, God, somewhere in the scriptures, the Bible says that for God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. Is it correct? And because of that, nothing had sprung out of the earth. But in verse number 10 of Genesis chapter 2, we saw that it was not the rain that watered the garden. God caused rivers to water the garden. Are you witnesses of God? So now, wherever this, where this river came from, and whatever this river is where, we, we, we can tell, but we know that the Bible speaks of the rivers of living water. Are you with me, sons of God? So verse number 10, quickly, let's read. And a river went out. And the river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted. And, be and became into four heads. So let's stop there. Verse 15, quickly. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Verse 16. Everybody read one ago. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden not of the earth of the garden thou mayest freely eat seventeen now this now gives us insight into what what the trees in the garden are we're dead where, where these trees just natural, no more trees, or there is something more to the trees in the garden. 17 that gives us a, a glimpse of insight into the nature of what the trees are. 17, let's read together verse number 7 that everybody want to go. But of the tree of the knowledge of the knowledge of I'm trying to lead some folks to catch something before I explain of of the tree of the knowledge of specific knowledge so the first point we ought to understand is that the trees in the garden were trees of knowledge. Have, have we established that point now? Okay. The trees of knowledge. Let's go on. And it says, and it says, but, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Verse 
For in the day that he text there of thou shall surely die. All right. That's a very good point there. Are you we here? Are you still here? The day you eat of this tree, you should surely die. So now it has it, it is now for us to understand that all the trees in the Garden of Eden were teachers. Every tree in the garden was a spiritual being, was a spiritual person, a, a lecturer, a teacher in the garden of Eden. So in the language of the garden, the only way we, we, we can understand what God was trying to say is that he, he used it as a tree. But in reality, this will lecture us. Teachers. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> the tree of life was Jesus. Satan was also there. The fruits are the words of these trees. The words of these trees are the fruits. So in the Garden of Eden, we had different levels of trees, lecturers, individuals, spirit beings, spirit entities that God had planted in the Garden of Eden to lecture Adam and Eve. Adam needed to grow spiritually. Adam needed to partake in the very wisdom of God. So there were trees of wisdom. The trees that contained all of God's knowledge. Adam needed to grow in the knowledge of God. Adam needed to grow in the wisdom of God. So all of the trees in the garden were different revelations of God that Adam needed to come into. Praise God. Very important that we note that point. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, let's establish this first point. Man in the Garden of Eden was more spiritual than physical. Please understand that point. God is a spirit. And the ultimate plan that he had was to reproduce himself. In a certain dimension, you know, he wanted a man that would be in his image and likeness, okay? Remember that, that the vision of man was that God would create a being, a creature that would look like him. Praise the Lord. So let us make man in our image after our likeness, all right, correct? So God was not about to create and he did not intend to create a natural man. He did not intend to create a physical man. God intended to create a spiritual man. Are you with me, sons of God? So man in the garden of Eden was a spiritual man 
In other words, he ultimately, before God blessed him in the garden, he was a living soul. Please let me retrace these footsteps now. He was what? A living soul. Please understand that. A living soul is not a natural man. Okay, if we are to go back to the scriptures, the Bible says, and God formed the man out of the dust of the ground, okay? And transferred a breath into the man, and the man became a living, a living soul. Now, at the very point man became a living soul, the Bible says God took the man he had created and placed him in the garden, in his garden. The Bible calls that garden the garden of God. The garden of Eden was the garden of God. In other words, the garden belonged to who? God. The, it, it was the kingdom of God, the dwelling place of God, the garden of God. So if it is God's garden, it means that God made man to be his very first family. And all the trees were the, 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 the employees of God. The workers. The lecturers, the teachers, to educate, to, to educate, to, to impact, to develop, to nurture the man. So man needed to grow in the knowledge of God in order to have an efficient relationship with the Lord. <laughs> Very important that we know these things because I'm about to share some few things that are so strong. So, let's dispute with this thing that, that man was just normal. Man had never been normal. God didn't create man to be normal in the sense that God interacted with man. Okay, for instance, when man sinned, he became natural man remember when he heard God he went hiding behind the trees he could not stand the presence of God so if you look at the the differences between the first man the first sin and the second man after sin, you will agree with me that something changed. Come on, sons of God. You see, when the first man had no sin, he, he had a relationship with God. The Bible says that God comes down in every cool of evenings to chat with man. To fellowship with man, to interact with man. But when man sinned, he lost that very ability to stand in the presence of God. When he heard the voice of God walking in the garden in the cold of the evening, the Bible says, Adam and Eve ran and they went hiding behind the trees. And God said, Adam, where are you? You have left the very spot, the very point where we meet. Adam, I can't see you at the point of our intimacy. Where are you? And Adam said, Lord, I heard thy voice and I hid behind the tree. And God said, what could 
possibly cause the man to run away from me. Have you eaten the tree that I asked you not to eat? Because I know what happens to those who eat the tree. And sometimes when you come to church and you see some people start acting strange. They, were, they, they used to be good people in church. And they start acting strange. The next question you're going to ask the person is, who have lied to you about Pastor John? What, what have you done? Because you, you can't not confidently stand my presence if you have not done something against me behind. <laughs> Adam, whose voice have you heard? Adam, which tree have you eaten from? Because now, instead of you being bold in my presence, you are acting funny in my presence. <laughs> People act funny, you know, because of what they've heard, of what they, they've entertained in their minds. That they are, they're not acting funny. The very God that, that, that was there for them, the very God that, that, that has helped them, the very God that has invested so much in their lives, they have turned their back at because they had had intimacy with the snake. You know, we're at this point. Every tree in the garden was a teacher. Every tree in the garden of Eden was a teacher. And all the trees in the garden of Eden, we had different dimensions and levels of God. Of which you know, and you agree with me, that one of the trees that stood out of all the trees in the garden was the tree of life. Amen. Hallelujah. The very reason why God drove Adam and Eve out of the garden was to deprive them, was to avert or cause them not to have access to the tree of life. So, Every tree in the garden carries a certain level of God's knowledge. For instance, you know very well that every child that you birth needs to be educated. In as much as that child is in, in your very image, You can choose to feed your child and not educate your child. Physical growth does not mean complete growth. For instance, you can go to the bush, okay? Bush. And you see people who ate very well, they, they killed animals, they know how to survive. But when you ask them a few questions intellectually, they know nothing. <laughs> because they didn't go to school. All they know is how to survive in the bush. You call them the bushmen. It was many, many years ago.
These were men that had no intellectual enlightenment. Of course, we, you know that our great, great, great grandfathers, okay? Grandfathers, great grandfathers, were bushmen. In fact, those days, if they look at the aircraft, they'll say it's a witchcraft. Civilizations advanced human consciousness. And of course, the advancement of human consciousness is as a result of the enlightenment of the human intellect. So through my intellect, I can assess a certain dimension of the spirit that is capable of salvaging the human race. <laughs> okay. All right, let me know. All right. Each tree in the garden had fruits of God's nature. Write it down, please. Write it down. Each tree in the garden had fruits of God's nature. If I call out Elder Africa now, or Elder Man, or Andy Lay, and bring him out now, and I say, okay, look at him as a man. The very day he was born, or they were born, any of these men, they did not achieve this very height that they are right now. It took time feeding both physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically, and intellectually for them to have reached where they are today. God is not a magician from the process of creation. Nothing just happens. Everything has its sequence and order. When he called forth light out of darkness, the Bible says God saw that the light was good and he separated light from darkness. He called darkness night and called the light day. He moved on to the next day. Everything God does has a sequential order. You know, I think I expected Jesus in the flesh to have grown supernaturally. But he did not. I thought that if God was to be conceived in the womb, he would have nurtured and grown in the next few days. But, 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 but the Bible says the seed of God in the womb observed the law of development in the womb. Jesus was birthed in the ninth month. I once said that Jesus had a supernatural conception. However, he 
had also a natural growth. Supernatural conception, but natural growth. So God does not break the laws that he had put in place. <laughs> Come on, sons of God. Now, inasmuch as yes, he formed the man out of the ground of the out, out of the dust of the ground, does not mean that everything he needed to know was infused into him overnight. The trees were to teach him everything he ought to know. Amen. A time has been put in place for the man to develop and become like God. God had a vision to create a man in his image. And there were divisions of knowledge. Different levels of knowledge were planted in the Garden of Eden. Access to the very essence and nature of God. So, oh, hallelujah, sons of God, hallelujah. Amen. Oh. Now, Listen to this. I have seen men who have great heights well built bodily good looking but they are foolish. They are useless. <laughs> they look good bodily, but, but they, 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 they have nothing inside their head. Honestly speaking, I detest such people. I know you don't like me right now. It's okay. Yeah, I just, just don't want to deal with you because you're going to cause confusion around me. The world is a function of wisdom. And as a matter of fact, the earth is a product of wisdom. Amen. And the heavens are products of understanding, period. So for me to become a ruler, the ruler to have dominion over the earth, then I must become a student of wisdom. Amen. I must go through all the faculties of wisdom. I must graduate from the lectures from the classroom of wisdom. That was what God was doing in the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden was the, the institution of God to educate man within the faculties of the seven spirits of God. Glory to God. Very important. Can I hear him answer that? As powerful as Jesus was, the Bible says that he grew in wisdom. <laughs> he grew in wisdom. Jesus had to grow in wisdom. He also grew in stature. He grew in stature. Uh, some want to grow in stature, you know? Uh, how is he doing when you... Listen, moms, dads, if you feed your child only to grow in stature, you have destroyed that child. Okay, let me fast forward. I mean, let me go quick. But I would teach you better. Trees actually represent people. Yes. Go do your re research. Whenever the Bible speaks of trees, the Bible is referring to a people or a nation or an individual. So the language of the spirit of, of trees are speaking of individuals. All of you looking at me right now, you are a tree in the spirit. That's why if anybody has sexes you as a tree and uproots you, you die in the physical. And if you're in the dream and you see a tree fall, just stop, stop praying. 
somebody's about to pass on in your family. Now, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.